Hello, everybody. Jose Rodriguez here. First of all, I want to thank everyone for the support you have given me. We hit 17,000 subscribers this past week, and that is unbelievable to me. I never thought I would have reached that type of uh, support. So thank you so much. This video is going to be about my five top problems you might experience with your inkjet photo prints. So if this is of interest to you, stay tuned. Hello and welcome back. And if this is the very first time you land on this channel, please consider subscribing. Click that bell right there so that you don't miss anything we upload. I got some examples to show you, prints, as well as maintenance processes that you need to run in order to eliminate or at least reduce the likelihood that you will experience one of these five problems. Number one, just the other day, color was fine. And now it's not. Well, the first thing you need to do is run a nozzle check. Now let's assume that you are running original manufacturer's inks or OEM inks, and you need to find out what changed. Your workflow has not changed, presumably, so something happened. Either one of the channels is not delivering sufficient ink, you have some nozzles blocked, and so now your color is off all of a sudden. It was fine, now it is not. The first thing you need to do is run a nozzle check. The nozzle check will tell you exactly what's wrong or what's not wrong, okay? It'll either be 100% or it will show some blockages. Now there are certain types of nozzle checks for certain models of printers, depending on the brand. And I'm gonna cover some of these later on. So run that nozzle check. And if you need to, then run a cleaning cycle. Don't run the cleaning cycle just for the heck of it because you, you saw the color was off, but your nozzle check is perfect, then it's something else. It's not your nozzles. It's maybe your workflow. All of a sudden, something has changed. Maybe your image has a different color space. You never know. So run a nozzle check, and if you have nozzles that are not firing, then go ahead and run a cleaning cycle, but don't do it unless you absolutely have to. All right, number two. My blacks look so weird. They look almost reverse. Yeah, your black channel is blocked. That's what that is. Almost 99.9% .9 of the time, it'll be because your black channel is not firing. It could be because of lack of use. It could be because you're using a refillable cart that you let run empty by accident, even though the chip reported you had ink in it. It could be the fact that you maybe reset the chip but forgot to top off that cartridge and now literally it's empty or you emptied it and then you refilled it without repriming the priming chamber, which is necessary in order to reestablish your ink flow. You have to do that. It's absolutely imperative that you do that. So now your channel is not firing at all. So check your cartridge. If you're using original inks, hmm. You better weigh that card. You better know what an empty one weighs. You better know what a full one weighs. You then check the weight of the one that supposedly is not providing enough ink and check to see if the card actually has ink in it. You never know. It could happen, especially with printers such as the Epson line that shares that black channel. At some point in the life of the printer, that valve is going to fail on you. If it doesn't, you're very lucky but it's going to fail and it's gonna cause a particular either photo black or matte black channel to just simply not flow at all because the valve is not working. It's very tricky, hard to diagnose, but most of the time it's due to that. Or your cartridge is literally empty because the whole channel cannot just simply go blank, okay? You're not gonna get a total blockage of several hundred nozzles in a channel. It's not gonna happen that way. So. Check to see if your ink carts are actually full if you're refilling and check to see if that original OEM cartridge actually has ink in it because it may have leaked out due to that faulty valve. All right, so that is number two. Number three, and this has happened to me. The beginning of my print is perfect. Then as the second half is being printed, it starts to shift color. It goes from say normal neutral colors to kind of a magenta look or a cyan look. That means that one of your cartridges, if it's cyan, that means your yellow cartridge 
possibly your magenta also is not firing. It's not feeding enough ink to your printhead and you're having ink starvation problems. So it begins fine and then as the demand increases, it can't keep up with it. And that happens most often with printers like the Pro 100, which utilize sponge cards. And if you're refilling them, you better be doing this correctly because then you're gonna introduce ink feed problems if your sponge is not correctly saturated due to the fact that you maybe waited till the cartridge was empty before you actually attempted to refill it. And that is wrong. You should always refill it when the cartridge hits low. That means that the sponge is still saturated. That means that the liquid chamber went empty finally. Don't wait any longer. Refill it now. Reset it and refill it now before you start using some of that ink that's in this sponge. You don't want to use any of that ink because you have nowhere to replenish that ink. You see? So as soon as it goes empty on the liquid side, fill that liquid side up. Reset the card, of course, prior to that. Well, you'll have a mess in your hands. But anyway, that's what happens. Ink starvation problems. On an Epson, it's not so much of a problem. On a Canon, it is because of the thermal properties of the printhead. They begin to overheat without sufficient cooling effect that the ink provides. So that is very important that you keep those sponges flowing by correctly refilling them. If you're afraid, then don't refill. Buy OEM all the time. What? That costs a fortune. Yeah, you knew that when you got into this. It does cost a fortune. So learn the refilling process correctly and always refill those cartridges as soon as they go low. And that does not apply to any other non-sponge Canon printer. Okay, only sponge type printer. So that would be the Pro 100. That would be the 9000, the older one those types of printers they have to use sponge carts so you refill those when they hit low never below that and especially empty never 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 all right so number four i have banding but it seems to be only on certain areas of certain colors and that occurs most often on spanses of sky so areas with cyan for some odd reason is very very common now, banding can be caused by many factors, and it depends on the type of banding that you actually visualize. So you have to be able to identify what type of banding you're actually seeing, okay? If it's a weird, um, not regularly spaced banding, that means you have some blocks of nozzles, okay? Like whole areas of nozzles completely not firing. So that's causing that banding. If it's a very regular banding where it looks like you have darker lines between your regular lines, in other words, the passes that the printhead makes across the paper, if you have darker areas like overlaps, that's a printhead alignment problem. If you have gaps where you have a lighter area, that's also due to a printer alignment problem. And they're always going to be very regular. They're going to actually be exactly the same as the amount of paper advance that the printer causes the paper to move, in other words. So that is tied up very directly to the print quality that you choose in the driver. So the farther apart those bands are, the lower your quality is. Some people will just simply say, well, use a higher quality setting. And that will make it almost imperceptible. No, doing a head alignment will eliminate that problem unless it is a mechanical problem or unless your encoding strip is dirty. What the heck is that? Well, that is right behind the printhead. It's a little strip of clear plastic. It has microscopically etched lines on it. And it uses it with a sensor to determine exactly the position of the printhead at any one time during printing. And if that is dirty, then you will have misalignment problems that cannot be fixed by running that either manual or auto head alignment. It just will not work. You will not be able to get rid of that banding. So how to take care of that? Well, on very rare cases, and that would happen if you have a very filthy interior in your printer, you never cleaned it, you did a lot of so-called borderless printing, you created lots of aerosolized ink, and that will deposit itself. And as your printhead goes back and forth, it'll start to smudge it, and eventually it becomes impossible for the printhead to track its position because that's what it uses along with that sensor on the printhead itself 
to track the position left and right as it travels back and forth is very important. So make sure that, of course, try, try, try not to ever print borderless because that will kind of eventually cause problems such as that. If you must, then make sure that you clean your printer's interior regularly. And that could be with any kind of a mild solution such as Windex, 70% um, alcohol, even just plain distilled water and just clean as much as you can without making a mess yourself. But again, the way to solve that is to simply don't print borderless. I know I'm gonna get bombarded by remarks from people, but hey, borderless was not supposed to be there. It was demanded by people. They finally caved in and made it a, a, a possibility by the driver. But you remember, you get that warning every time you click on borderless, it's not there for uh, no reason at, at all. It's there for a reason. It will cause problems with, at the edges of the prints, especially with printers without vacuum assisted travel or paper advance. It will cause problems. Occasionally you get prints that just simply don't look so good around the edges, either the leading or the trailing edge. And the most favorite one of my ever questions or, or reasons, my prints are not matching my monitor. They are darker. The colors are not matching. They have an overall cast. Everything is fine. The nozzle check is perfect. Help, help. Yeah, well, that just basically comes down to the very, very old practice of not having your monitor calibrated properly. So you are printing your images that you edit on a display that is not displaying the colors accurately to begin with. You are introducing all sorts of bias, color-wise, contrast-wise, brightness-wise, and you name it, okay? Because out of the box, the monitor, unless you pay $2,000 for a monitor, it's not gonna be calibrated properly for photography. It's gonna be calibrated for viewing movies, internet, that sort of thing, okay? So you need to make sure that your monitor is calibrated properly. And if you really wanna be super exact, get the X-Rite Color Checker Passport and also create profiles for your particular camera lens combination. That will bring you into the, your editing application, displaying as perfect that image that you just captured on that memory card. And then if your monitor is also correctly calibrated, that's it. You are beginning at the best possible scenario. You got a corrected file because of that profile, takes into account any problems that the sensor any inaccuracies, I should say, that the sensor introduced, the lens introduced a color bias, it will take care of that for you before you even begin to edit. And so your monitor now is also correctly calibrated for intensity or brightness. In other words, it's gonna be probably darker than you're used to, you have to. And contrast has to be adjusted and linearity of all the tones and also color correctness and the software and the calibrator or the so-called colorimeter or a spectrophotometer will take care of those little details for you. And you are now able to edit your images being super confident that what you are seeing is correct. Now all you have to do is worry about the printer's output. And for that, I'm gonna turn over to what I usually do. And I wanna show you what I have uh, Done here, some examples here for you guys to see. Nozzle check, nozzle check, nozzle check, okay? That's the most important thing. If you ever do anything, run nozzle checks regularly. It's not just to keep the printer flowing. That has nothing to do with it. But it will tell you if you are developing one or two or three nozzles that are just not firing, firing properly. My R3000 sat for months because I simply didn't want to use it anymore. Then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna convert this to a sublimation printer. So I need to revive it again. Right now I have all original inks in it, but on refillable cartridges. I ran a nozzle check. Here's number one. Everything was fine. Yellow, yellow, light vivid magenta, light cyan, vivid magenta, cyan, light, light gray, light gray, and matte black because my printer is locked to matte black right now, the valve is bad. So I got it to work with matte black. You cannot switch over to photo black. It'll make a mess. 
I got probably 40% of my nozzles firing and a couple of bad nozzles here on the uh, light black as well, not firing. So cleaning cycle, and now I got all but one nozzle not firing in the light black. And I would say maybe 80% are firing on the uh, photo black. One more cleaning cycle. And they're very gentle. They're not huge, wasteful cleaning cycles on the R3000. After the third cleaning cycle and a moment of rest, I printed the next nozzle check 100% all the way across. So yeah, you have to do that. This will sneak up behind you. You will have no idea what is causing this gradual decrease of print quality. And it will reflect itself as weird banding, kind of irregular looking banding that is not due to head alignment problems. So that was done on the R3000. Let me show you what this looks like on the Pro 1 or the Pro 10 from Canon, for instance, and also the Pro 100. This is the difference. And now you can look at these with a loop and you will be able to see a line of dots all the way across. So it's not a very good design, I might add, but at least you should be able to see if there are any lines, gaps or whatever. And one thing to remember, if you ever see half where the upper half is darker than the lower half or vice versa, that head is fried. That is an electronic failure. So you're looking here for any gaps. So you have your gray, your photo black, your light gray, dark gray, and so on. And then this one here is chroma optimizer. What it does, it uses some of the gray, and then it applies a chroma optimizer over that. And you should be able to see a nice band where the chroma optimizer was actually laid because it'll look a little bit wetter, a little bit darker looking. You need to run these. You need to run these all the time, especially on Canon printers, because you have to establish that they are indeed flowing ink. That will not tell you that on a very high demand image, okay, and with maybe nominally working refilled cartridges, you will not experience ink starvation. This is not a very demanding thing to do. This requires hardly any demand from the print cartridges. Printing a regular image with strong colors will put a demand on those cards. And if they are not properly refilled, you will then introduce ink starvation, reduce ink flow, and then the snowball effect begins because the moment that printhead begins to overheat, it begins to kind of cook the ink. Yeah, so you begin to get, you literally get a crusty covering on those resistors. That's it. After that, it just keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And then that is it. You better buy a new printhead and start with new cartridges so that you can start afresh. All right, now, the Pro 1000 has one heck of a uh, nozzle check. Kind of looks like a regular service nozzle check for Canon, but this is a little bit different. This is composed of little crosses. Got 12 inks to worry about here. So you better make sure that all of your inks are flowing properly. And again, I got 100% ink flow here. I have only run between 101 and 150 pages or prints in this machine so far. I'm running version 2.02 firmware. I'm not about to update it. Hit information, so and so and so, 08, 10, 2017. So that's the age of the printer. So make sure you run these. This is totally necessary. You need to do that. The one that I showed you earlier was Epson. It's typical Epson type nozzle check. The 800, P800 has the same nozzle check. The 2880, 2400, 3880, 3800, 3000, P600, P400, all of those printers use the same design for a nozzle check. Basically the little blocks of lines. Pro 1000 uses this grid and all of the other Canon printers use the band across. So I got a perfect nozzle check. So the next thing that you need to do when you install a printer is of course to establish that the head is aligned. What does that mean, head alignment? And this is some indecipherable test here. I mean, who knows what's going on here? But this is the auto nozzle check and I use matte paper. The reason I use matte paper instead of just plain paper is because matte paper is coated. You should really use glossy paper because glossy paper has very minimal dot gain. What you're measuring here are little tiny lines. And the sensor will look at these and determine which way the head is not aligning, in other words. 
And so what you want to establish is that even in, in a lower quality setting, you will have no banding. In other words, the head will make a pass and lay down ink, and then it will advance exactly the same amount of the width of the band of ink it just laid down. And it lays down the next band of ink and so on and so forth. So it will make a pass, make a pass, advance. Make a pass, make a pass, advance. Now, if you have a misaligned head, you will either overlap because you're not advancing enough or you will have a gap because you're advancing a little bit too much. In other words, it will exceed the width of that layman of ink. So it will exceed that and you will end up with a little white band between each pass. It's all due to head alignment problems. So you need to run those, run them about, I would say, I don't know, every six months. It wouldn't be a bad idea to run a head alignment. Wouldn't hurt. Now, going back to the, my prints are too dark, the colors are off. And again, I tell you, I bet you, my life, that you are referring to your own images you edited, right? So that means that something is wrong in your workflow. That means very likely it is your monitor. That is very likely it's also the fact that you didn't set up your driver properly. So the first thing you should ever, ever do is print a standard image. This image is a Profoto RGB TIFF file. I have it available in my Facebook group. You can find it on the, on, on, on the internet just as easily. It is freely available everywhere. So get it from me if it's easier for you to just join my group and download a whole crap load of these uh, files because I have a nice pack of them among many other types of files that you can use to check, for instance, ink, ink flow. That would be very convenient. You print this by simply opening it in your favorite photo editor and then print it. Send it to the printer. Tell the driver that you are using Canon Pro Luster and high quality letter size print. And this is what will emerge. This was done with a Pro 10. And this was done with a Pro 10 with not OEM inks. This was done using Precision Color Signature Edition plus OEM Red Ink, which is what I am standardizing my Pro 10 for right at this moment. So again, we have a neutral rendition of this scanning electro micrograph. I don't know of what, but it's very neutral. There are no linearity problems. It is neutral throughout. The baby's faces, this is very important because this is something that you're very familiar with. They look perfect. And of course, many other types of images. You got these autogamic colors here. You should be able to discern the difference between each of those patches. This one here shows graduated colors. And this should also tell you about any kind of problem with banding between transitional points. And then of course, your black to white ramp. I can see the number one, zero, zero, zero patch. And the next one, clearly. And this is plain paper. And this is just one step down. The same thing happens here, but a little bit more gradual. So this turned out perfect. What does this tell me? This tells me my Pro 10 is able to buy itself without any help from any kind of ICC profile or any kind of other fancy dandy color management workflow. It can by itself produce a near perfect rendition of that Profoto RGB test image. This is really the standard that most people are using right now. So, what if it's not perfect, okay? What if it's not perfect? What if you have, say for instance, some weird tonality changes here. Maybe it's a little bit warmer here in this zone. Maybe it's a little bit cooler over here. Maybe it's neutral in the center, but warm in the shadows, you name it. What if you see some weird color cast in the shadows of the baby's faces? Then you probably need a color profile. And that may be because you're using some third party paper, for instance. So you're using another paper and you're using their profile. But again, I'm using Precision Colors inks. So of course it's not gonna be made for that. It's gonna be made for original inks. With this printer, it won't be a problem because I am using indeed original inks. So what you need to have done is a custom color profile. And this is what the process looks like. You print a set of patches and then these are scanned by a color spectrometer and each color patch is red and then it is compared to a list of the values that were actually sent to the printer, okay? They will differ. They will not be perfect. They will differ one way or another. And then 
the software will create a correction curve, which will then be applied whenever you print to that particular paper and you use that profile to print through. So this rendition here is not what was sent to the actual printer. This rendition here is what the printer was able to do with no color management whatsoever. Okay, so the printer was not manipulated by the printing application whatsoever. It just printed it. Raw data was printed. It was scanned and then it was compared to the original values and whatever errors were corrected for. In other words, if it swayed in this direction, it was brought back in this direction by that correction curve. And so that was applied to every one of those patches. And then when you then print your images again, specifically this one, it should come out much better, almost perfect. So with just the driver controlling color, you get a near perfect condition, but with an ICC profile that's made specifically for the inks that you're using and that paper and that printer, you should get near perfect results. If you're not getting near perfect results, there's a workflow problem, okay? That's all I can tell you. All right, let me show you very quickly some images. This is what you should be striving for. I'm not saying these are the best in the world, but these represent several printers and what they can actually produce. So here we have my favorite Canson watercolor paper. We get this at any kind of art shop, art store, and it is uncoated. So you are printing directly on to uncoated watercolor paper that is meant for painting watercolor paintings. It is not for printing on inject printers. But as you can see, the results are great. I use the Pro 1000 for this. What profile did I use? None. I just use matte paper setting and I let the driver control color. And you get nearly perfect results of my own image that I converted to a painting. What about something really ridiculously color saturated? You've seen this before. I know if you saw my aluminum version of this, you were probably floored like I was, but you can see the colors here are so deep and so strong. And this was done on the Pro, let me see. No, actually no, on the P800, okay, with OEM inks. This is uh, Epson luster paper. Then we have Aurora, uh, I believe it's natural. Matte paper, beautifully textured, done on the Pro 1000. Again, just, just stunning. It's so creamy, so beautiful. It just looks like a Renaissance painting. It is so gorgeous. And again, it looks just like the image on my monitor. Wedding shot, done on the P800, using matte ink, matte black, that is. This is my friend, wedding party. These colors are spot on. You know why? I actually used my X-Rite color checker passport at that particular location, and I was able to correct the incorrect rendition by my sensor of these colors right here specifically these. No one really cares much about the other colors, but those bridesmaids will really be upset if those dresses are not correctly rendered. And of course, the dress is perfectly neutral. Well, what about a, a, a um, still life? Crazy colors here, very strong. Pro One created this beautiful rendition. Got a uh, red chili, orange, bright green and again very deep black it almost you could almost see a graduation in the background because it was actually a curved backdrop but again i set the black point to the point where i had only black here and you can still this is here about a dark fairly dark gray but you can see the graduation this is of course me sitting here looking at it i could see shadows under the pepper itself as well so I printed one, I printed one, that's it. It didn't take me, you know, seven tries. Just one, one try. Once you nail down your process, you'll be able to walk away. Hit print, go get some coffee, come back, and you'll be presented with a beautiful print. And this is the one I just recently did on the PA-100 using Red River. I believe it's uh, polar luster paper. It's huge. 
uh, 17 by 20 something, I forget what it is. But again, this looks just like the monitor displays it. And that's the goal, that is your goal. You wanna display your images correctly, and then if the printer is printing correctly, either by itself or with the aid of an ICC profile, you should be able to have pretty much the best of both worlds. Hope they stay right there, don't move. So that is it, it's quite simple once you nail all of these steps that you need to address down. And then once you get that, it's like, for instance, it's like making a certain uh, something, a souffle, or making a flan, making something that is very temperature specific. And if you can control that temperature, you will always have consistent results instead of a souffle that drops or a souffle that doesn't get fluffy. You know what I mean. You have to nail down your monitor, and if you can, do your camera as well, but primarily your monitor, and establish before you do any editing at all of any of your private images. Print that standard image first, establish that the printer by itself can produce a relatively good rendition of that image. Okay, many times it's just not gonna be absolutely perfect because you're not using color management workflow, you're just telling the driver to control color. But again, simply, camera calibration. That means that the image coming out of that card will be rendered correctly. And then if the monitor is also correctly calibrated, you will see it better than you can ever imagine. And there's a way that you can actually toggle off the calibration on, on that camera profile that you create for that particular shooting situation. The only bad part is that you gotta make a new one every time you go out and shoot. So anyway, but that's not too much trouble. It's just one click of that card. So the third thing of course, is to make sure your printer's properly rendering out your standard image. That is it. What else can go wrong? Well, setting mistakes, that's that sort of thing. Double profiling maybe. So you need an application that will prevent you from making those mistakes once you establish the correct workflow. QImage will do that for you. This is not a commercial for QImage, but I've been using it for years and I really value that feature. Say for instance, this was a print that I was selling. Okay. And I don't want to make a hundred of them and have them sit here and take up my space. So I can print one at a time. If I have my printer always set up with a particular paper and that's all I'm going to be printing on it, then I can go ahead and print, say every day, the same print. I don't have to reset any of the settings. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything for the border width, the layout whatever, any, once I do it the very first time and it is perfect the way it comes out of the printer, I save that as a job. I call it sunset at blankety blank. And then next week I need to make another print. What if I have other images that are printed on the same printer? I can create individual jobs just like that. Give them names and I can recall the job and it will just pull out the image from wherever it is stored, load it into the layout, paper size, the printer will be set exactly the same way it was when I successfully printed that one image. I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about anything. Why would you not want that, okay? That is one of the reasons I use QImage. I'm gonna be doing a QImage setup video. In other words, very basic printing video using QImage and exporting out of Photoshop and out of Lightroom so you get an idea how to use that. If you don't wanna edit in QImage, that's fine. But QImage used for printing, yeah, it's quite good. So you can do your editing in Photoshop, you can do your editing in Lightroom, and simply export out to QImage instantly, instantly, and then you print that duplicate file through QImage and apply its special algorithm for resizing, uh, sharpening, whatever you wanna do. All right, so that is it. I hope you enjoyed this rather long and tedious video, but again, I wanted to touch upon these five points because they just come up on a daily basis out there. So again, please, folks, watch these videos. Put them on your playlist on YouTube so you can go back and refer to them. That way they will not get lost. Since I got over 1,100 videos now, they will not get lost. So anyway, so that is it. Thank you so much. Keep subscribing, sharing, and liking. And until the next time, as always, happy printing, everybody, and bye-bye.